Okay. Uh, it, yeah. In in what uh, capacity? In in what fashion? You're an addendum of miscellaneous matters in pencil with a question mark. Nevertheless. Welcome to Suck Ten, where we break down episodes of the hit HBO series Succession in ten minutes. I'm one of your hosts, Jamie G. Esquire, the fifth master of negotiations. You were right about one thing, Master. The negotiations were short. I'm here with my co-host, Magna Mills, and we're going to break down the fourth episode of season four of Succession, titled Honeymoon States. Mills, despite the title, I don't know that this is much of a honeymoon episode. Straight to the moon, Jamie G. Straight to the moon. I am Magna Mills. Thank you for checking out Suck 10. Hopefully you have some idea what the honeymooners are, or that joke went right over your head. Uh, Suck 10 is presented by Regular Dudes Watch Stuff. Find us wherever you get your podcast. Just search for Suck 10. That's S-U-C number one, number zero. Or Dudes Watch Stuff. Find us on social media at Dudes Watch Stuff. If you could, please hit the like button, leave a rating, follow, subscribe, whatever. Also on the YouTube, search for us there. Find our YouTube channel at Joe Blow Football Show. And again, the like, comment, follow, subscribe thing. It literally takes you less time to do than it takes Tom Brady to run a 40-yard dash. And it helps people find our show. Thank you very much. And I guarantee you'll do it with a lot more grace than Tom Brady running a 40-yard dash. This is a full spoiler show. So literally every single thing about Succession is up for discussion here, including the next time on. So this is your first and your only warning. Go ahead and hit us with those deets, my dude. This is Season 4, Episode 4, the 33rd overall episode of Succession, titled Honeymoon States. Directed by Lorraine Scafaria, this is the second episode of Succession that she has directed, written by Lucy Preble. This is her second written by credit on Succession. The predictably short and vague plot synopsis is, as the Waystar team discusses a pivotal recommendation to the board, Roman, Kendall, and Shiv navigate a misstep with Madsen. I know that we'd like a honeymoon state to last forever, but we've only got 10 minutes to do this thing, starting now. Well, it's time for us to give our overall thoughts on Honeymoon States. Mills, for me, I thought they did a really good job picking up from where the pieces were in episode three. Crazy one, shocker, makes a lot of sense, but shocker. I thought they did a really good job kind of now giving you a clear indication of people who are players, including people we might have forgotten about, like Marsha back in the mix. And you can get to see she's starting to be a little bit of a player here. Like, I I really like how they did that, all while trying to keep this story moving without Logan. So I give this episode a lot of credit, man. I was worried a little bit that maybe this would be a smidge of a letdown coming off the the banger that was, you know, episode three, with just how huge and, and momentous that episode was. But I don't think it let me down at all. I was actually really happy with this one. I think I agree with just about everything you said there. It is interesting that this might be the most credited cast members and guest stars that we've ever had in a single episode. Seriously, though, it, it kind of moved some plot points forward a lot more than I expected. For instance, uh, Shiv being pregnant kind of came out of the left field a little bit, although it seems like she's known that for a while. Uh, finding the, the piece of paper with, you know, was it underlined, was it crossed out? Either way, it kind of pushed everything to the break. We got some moving on the mats and thing. Now we're going to have to go fly overseas and I like that they mixed it up a little bit. There was definitely still some sadness and some grieving and that kind of thing, but it was a little bit more humor than I would have thought. So I thought that all worked uh, pretty good for me. Really no complaints. Like you said, it was kind of a Herculean task to follow up the episode where, you know, Logan Roy finally bites the big one. So I think they did a good job. Yeah. And just one quick thing to note too. uh, I, I really like that, you know, we were kind of riding this wave and don't get me wrong. I think it's really cool how the kids have been getting along and you kind of like it, but we kind of got a little bit this time where it's like, Ooh, we could see him maybe pivoting against each other. And, and so that was kind of cool with the letter. Right. So uh, a couple surprises in there, but overall great episode before the title sequence starts, we find out as Magna Mills mentioned that Shiv is indeed pregnant. Any thoughts on that bombshell and how it might've impacted Shiv's actions in this, in this episode, particularly with her kind of like, I don't know, given in a little bit on that on that that seemed like the weakest shiv negotiation i've ever seen with her just kind of allowing roman and and kendall to kind of take the realms there i do think that it probably impacted her i wouldn't say negotiations but her interactions with tom here i don't think she really quite knows how to play it and i don't know that she can 
forgive him. And also, I don't think she ever really considered being a mother. It's a weird spot for her to be in. And I think, again, with so much on her mind now, she's obviously known about this for longer than just this episode. So she has been thinking about it. But when you add, I mean, that's quite a, a twist in life right there, right? You lose your father, but then you have a new son or daughter on the way. It's kind of crazy. So I guess it, it does justify the fact that she seems maybe a little bit more distracted than the other siblings here. Doesn't maybe quite have her you know, eye on the on the brass ring as much. But let's be honest, they weren't going to be able to go with uh, uh, Thruple at the CEO position either. So. So part of it was probably recognizing reality on that aspect. Jamie G, we see here at the wake, uh, Connor has a very brief negotiation with Marsha to buy Logan's apartment. She says she'd like between uh, 60 and 70 million, but she snap accepts the offer when Connor goes up to 63 million. Uh, did he get fucked harder than his siblings than they bid on Pierce? Or was this a, a fair deal here, you think? The property values in New York City are out of control. So there's a good chance it's worth that. I'm curious to see what would it appraise for. Obviously, he doesn't know nor care. I'm going to say not quite as bad as, as bidding on Pierce, but he may have overpaid a smidge. But it is a beautiful place. But you always have to be worried when someone accepts that fast, right? Yeah, 100%. You didn't even blink. Right, right to spitting on the hand and thank you, ma'am, can I have another? I, you know, for her to accept that fast, it's definitely a good price for her. So at the bare minimum, you know, Connor's just like hopefully got an okay deal. Well, here's a small but very, very, very important question. Did Logan underline Ken's name or did he cross out Kendall's name? The correct answer is probably Logan wasn't wearing his glasses and couldn't tell either way. Realistically, I'm going to go with he did both just knowing this exact situation would happen and somebody would find this just as one kind of fuck you. How about yourself? I I'm saying it was underline. It, 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 he seems like the type of dude who if he was going to cross something out, that mo, that mo would be crossed out. You wouldn't be able to see a damn letter in there. To me, it looked just like a sloppy underline, but that's where I'm going with it. We wound up with Kendall and Roman as co-CEOs. Kind of interesting. If it was up to you, would you have gone with them or maybe with somebody else? After watching this episode, I don't know. I, I'm kind of pulling towards Frank a little bit. I don't know why, but he seemed to have maybe the best chance of balancing the gray beers and the kids. Uh, how about yourself? I've been saying Kendall's the right person for the job ever since day one. I got to ride with it, Mills. I, I'm glad of. I'm glad with this. So you wouldn't pivot to somebody else if you had the choice? It's Kendall, ride or die, full DMX? I think so, man. I think so. All right, one little bit here, because Logan's out of the picture, and so now people are kind of, oh, you know, they lost their patron or whatever, so we see a lot of people kind of doing a little bit of groveling, a little bit of sucking up to the the Roy siblings here. And Jamie G, who do you think uh, did the, the best job of uh, coming up with their beggars cup here? Oh, you got to, you got to give a shout out to cousin Greg. I mean, he was, he was working Marsha so hard and she gave him a, she gave him a little bit of BE, which we refer to as banging energy. There was some looks coming from her. Uh, she kind of looked and said, thank you in a way that gave me a little BE Magna Mills. Greg's so bad at it. I'll go with Tom just because he knew he was screwed when he was asking, but he kept trying anyways. Greg is dumb enough to think he actually had a shot. Tom knew he was on a doomed mission. Uh, how about here at the very end of the episode, Kendall, you know, he pulls uh, the rank on Hugo because he knows about his daughter selling that stock. So he asked him on the download to go with uh, option B there. They kind of shit on Logan's strategy. Good move or bad move by Kendall? I think it's a power move by Kendall. And I think in the end, that'll play dividends for him. He may suffer some bumps, but I think it's a good move. You know that our favorite part of succession is the dialogue. So it's time for us to each give our favorite quote of the episode. All right, I'm up first here with my dialogue. Again, another episode filled, but I got to go with Carl literally shitting on Tom and just, and just ruining his day when he says, The negative case would go, you're a clumsy interloper and no one trusts you. The only guy pulling for you is dead. And now you're just married to the ex-boss's daughter and she doesn't even like you. And you are fair and squarely fucked. Jesus, Carl. But he's kind of right. I got to go one. It's one of my favorites, a tag team where all the Roy siblings get on it. And that's when they're reading the uh, the obituaries of Logan and they do a little bit of translating. A complicated man. Threw phones at stuff. It's <laughs> good. Sharp reader of the national mood. Uh, he's a bit racist. <laughs> well, then he was very much a man of his era. Again, racist, mm -hmm. also relaxed about sexual assault. Business genius. Never paid a penny in U.S. <laughs> tax. Oh, that's, Boom. yeah. Well connected. Well connected, now that's not fair. 
I feel like well-connected is generally accepted to be a euphemism for pedophile, and no one ever suggested that he would, you know. Fuck a child. Yeah. Yeah. He wouldn't even hug his grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you, Mills, what does the burn ward look like this week? Is there some room, or are we at max capacity with the burn victims? It's pretty full this week. I mean, look, you could say it's hard being a Roy, but it sure as fuck isn't easy being Carrie. Where's Carrie? Uh, in Marsha's trunk. Inside an anaconda. Inside a sarcophagus. And let's be honest here. Sometimes when Roman insults Greg, it feels like he's punching below his weight class a little bit. So... You need to get a new mommy, okay? We're not your mommy. And, Jerry, you did everything but offer Tom a side of infinite sadness. I mean, I'm sick with grief. Oh, you're sick I... with grief? You might want to put down that fish taco. You're getting your melancholy everywhere. Shout out my Smashing Pumpkins joke. And Willa, she's a player. In fact, she plays the reverse Uno Gold Digger card on Marsha. Congratulations. Hmm, thank you. Look how far you've come. Yep. Yeah. We'll look at us both, right? And to be fair, it's not a real burn ward without some Roy on Roy victims. You know, it's an impossible to decipher. Well, it sure as fucking shit doesn't say ship. And Roman thinks that he knows why Logan wrote Greg's name down. He probably <laughs> wrote it down so he can remember your name. And you know Tom is having a bad day when he takes a shot at Logan, even though he's no longer walking this earth. He was a man who wasn't man, wearing his so compression socks so he could look hot for Carrie. And shout out Stewie. Kendall was starting to fly a little bit too high towards the end of the episode. Probably need to get down a peg or two. What was it? Uh, embolism. Pulmonary. Because I heard he saw your Pierce business plan and choke laughing. That brings us to the Roy rankings. Mills, what are we working with four episodes deep into season four? How do the rankings stack up? At the very bottom of the 16 characters we ranked, we both picked Carrie 16th. So, Carrie, congratulations. You are now uh, basically homeless and dead last in the Roy rankings. We had a tie for number five between Jerry and Carl. At number four, we have Shiv Roy. At number three, we have Frank the Tank. At number two, Roman Roy, we both ranked him two. And at one, Kendall Roy, we both ranked him one. So a lot of agreement again at the top and bottom of the Roy rankings. Well, it is time to give a grade to this episode titled Honeymoon States. We've got a wake, we've got a presidential candidate, but let's go ahead and grade the episode on a scale of one to 10 interim CEOs. Mills, you're up first here on the chopping block. 9.4 interim CEOs. It feels about right here. It doesn't reach the highs of last episode, but again, still a very, very good episode of Succession and a fantastic episode of television. How about you, Scooby-Doo? Right there with you. I'm going to one-up your Price's White style just a smidge and go 9.5 interim CEOs. Great episode. And I have never seen an episode of the, the Price is White, but I'm assuming it's not as racist as it sounds. That brings us to our predictions. Jamie G, when, if ever, does Shiv tell Tom that she's pregnant? This coming up episode. She was close last week, dropping clues. I think it happens next episode. I say she tells him, but we're at least two episodes out. And I guess this news requires an update. So do you think Tom and Shiv still get divorced? No. I I, I never did. I, I'm staying by it. I think they still do. I, I think Shiv could be out there being a single mom. And we heard about when she might tell him. But when will Shiv give birth? Before the end of the series? Or will we still end the series with her still pregnant? I don't. I think we end the series with her pregnant. I think we got to have a time jump. I think we have to see the new generation as it comes out. It might not be till this the series finale. But I think we get there. Do you think that the Gojo deal will either happen or not happen one way or the other? We'll get some finality. Will there be a final decision in the next episode? No, I think it, I think it drags on a little bit more. I still think there'll be no deal, but I agree with you in that it will still drag on a little bit like spitting these bars. After Connor just plunked down 63 mil, a cool 63 mil to buy Logan's apartment, is Willa still going to want to go uh, with him through the uh, the honeymoon states on his campaign trail? Nice use of the title of the episode there. I'm thinking, no, her and her mom are staying there and they're already knocking walls down and stuff. They probably won't even bother to check if they're load bearing. Uh, give me your three top gray beards of Waystar. One, Frank, two, Jerry, three, Carl. Probably a top tier or two. I think Frank and Jerry are pretty close. Carl just wants his goddamn golden parachute. 
And finally, the big question, the one we have to ask every week, at the end of the series, who will be crowned the king or queen of succession, so to speak? You know, I've said it's always going to be Ken. I'm going to stick with it, but just so people are aware, in the back of my mind, I've got Shiv creeping on the come up on a surprise move. I finally have to come off of Cousin Greg here. I've been adamant, but now it makes it seem that uh, Roman and Kendall too obvious, so I am going to go with Shiv. Jamie G, a one random prediction for the rest of season four. You got anything? Lucas Matson is an absolute asshole and also tries to bang Shiv. I am going to go with, uh, this is it for Connor Willa. He goes out on the campaign trail. She stays home. By the time he gets back, she's changed the locks and shit and they're done. He's going to have to buy this place and he's never even going to get to stay in it for 63 mil. Bonus time awarded. Anything else before we get out of here? Just some basic stuff like, you know you're rich as fuck when you can't be bothered to buy a case for your iPhone. None of the Roys have a fucking case on their phone. And I like that we got to see what Tom really thinks of the Roy siblings when he's talking to Frank, when he finishes Frank's sentence for him. Screw ups and dipshits. And, uh, you know, like Carl, they, they love what he did in the 90s with cable. Oh, shit, dude. I guess they weren't lying when uh, they said all your dead relatives were watching when you were doing stuff with yourself to, you know, 90s cable. And I've heard the group referred to as a pretty fluid group before. And in my experience... That means that I'm going to go home alone with a huge bar tab that I have to pay at the end of the night. And, uh, you know, Greg's not that kind of question mark. It reminds me of when a woman wants to break up with me, but she doesn't want me to change my HBO Max or Netflix passwords. And Tom, I understand you're in a weird place, but you got to be easy there. Because the last time somebody asked me to show some kindness, I wound up spending the night in jail for solicitation. Thank you guys for checking out Suck 10. Don't you worry, we'll be releasing episodes each and every Tuesday, breaking down the latest episode of Succession. In 10 minutes, no more, no less. We'll be back next week to cover the next episode titled Kill List. That title already has me hooked. I'm on the line. They're reeling me in. Anything to add before we get out of here, dude? Thanks again for checking us out. Remember, find us wherever you get your pods. Search for Dudes Watch Stuff on social media at Dudes Watch Stuff. Search for us on YouTube or go to JoeBlowFootballShow.com. Brings you right to our YouTube channel. Thank you one more time for checking us out. On behalf of myself, Magna Mills, and Jamie G, we are the Real Disgusting Brothers. Just remember, you can't make a Tomlin without breaking some Gregs. Well, these hands aren't going to fuck themselves, so... Go get yourself some Greglers. <laughs> <laughs>